Shalom, Shalom, Shabbat, Adonai. This segment here is called Hokuma or Shochuma. It is spelled H O U K H K U M A H Some people spell it Chochuma. But I want to tell you about uh Chochuma is wisdom in Hebrew. But it, now I'm gonna tell you. When you look at this or you see it on the internet, the the people who call themselves uh, Jewish, they have claimed this wisdom for themselves, but it's not their wisdom because Hokuma will not reveal herself to anyone like that. She only reveals herself to her lovers. God do not reveal himself to other people. That's not going to happen. That will not happen. It does not happen. But they have claimed what they have that they have stolen there in Israel, documents that they have stolen, and then they call it they call it Kabbalism. But it is not the teaching of Jewish. It's not Jewish. It is Hebrew. Wisdom is Hebrew. There would be no understanding of Hokuma or Chochuma without the Hebrew faith. But the Jews have stolen it and make people think that this is something that they thought of and they call it Kabbalicism. But it's not Kabbalicism. It is Hebrew. And her name is Chochuma. Chochuma or Hokuma is not Jewish. It is Hebrew. They only wrote down things that they copied from the books that they have there, from the, the things that they have stolen. After the, after the loneliness and after the creation and the rescue from him, from his transgressions, and gave him strength to master all the things that were upon the earth in unrighteousness, man abandoned her in his anger and perished his radical rage. When the earth was in a dilute and deluge, because of him, wisdom saved him. The upright man steering him with a cheap piece of wood, it was she who that led the nations that after they was confused, she was she brought them back together. She realized the upright man and preserve him and made him blameless before God and not ashamed to speak to a lifeless thing and appeal to something that was in a wreck for help and ask what is itself utterly experienced for aid in something that he cannot even take a step about a journey and he asked for strength for to gain the business of success and what is in darkness and what he cannot understand he prays to something that he made with his own hand but asked, asked God for a blessing but something that he prays to that was made with his own hand again man is setting out on a voyage and about to travel over the world in waves 
He calls upon the waves and a piece of wood that he made with his, his own hand to save him. Even the ship that he set sail in, he has more confidence in a ship than he has in the, the God that made him. It was designed through the desires for the gain of wisdom that the craftsmen that built it and the providence for the, for the pilot who gave it away even unto the sea and a safe path through the waves showing that you can save yourself from anything if you pray without any skills. A man go to sea and puts it to his works and your wisdom she never embraces a lover or a thief. She is too pure. She is too sound. Therefore, men trust their lives even to the smallest plank, but not put their trust in God. Even in crossing the flood on a raft and get safety. How does God put a man on a ship, on an ark, and then guides him through safety, through the flood of the earth? Wisdom does this, even by using a raft. Nor through paying attention to his works, they recognize the workman as the true God of him who goes before them and that whom they refuse to know. Therefore, every height and every condemnation overtook them, for all the men were foolish by nature and had no perception of God. From their good things that were visible, they had the ability to do accept things visible, but things not visible they could not understand, nor did they give credit to the one who made them, nor could they see that these things tangible that I see, I admonish them, and they are so beautiful, but they didn't think that how great the maker was, or if there was a creator that made them. And if through the light of their beauty, they suppose that they were gods, let them know how more superior than the Lord that made these, the originator, the beauty created them. But if it is not thought that at their own power and their own operation, let them conclude from how much easier or mightier he is who formed it. And the greatness and the beauty of the creator, the originator of them that correspondently perceive, for there is in her a spirit of intelligence, a holy, unique, a man manifold, subtile, mobile, clear, and undefiled, distinct beyond harm, loving and good, king, unhindered, benefitter, Palantha, firm, sure, and care, and reveals herself only to her lovers because she is pure. Within every man, God placed his soul, that, that the soul loves the Lord and desires to be in cohabitation with his God and longs to be with God. Before, before a man, when he before a man died, the soul returns back to God, and testifies against you, even the secret things that are in your heart. Therefore, wisdom goes back to where it was originated, because it will say that the person that you gave me to did not love you and did not care about you. So your, your own, the soul that God gave you will testify against you. They only know of her, but they don't believe in her because she would not reveal herself to them. She is very modest in revealing herself to her lovers.
the memory of her, the pleasure I reached. I reached this inward pleasure, but it chases after fools, after fools go, yet I will tell you to be a fool. I will tell you that there are some pleasures in this world, but to chase after them will not be having wisdom. These things are all tangible and they are not transitory. You cannot take them with you. It is fool's gold. If you will listen to wisdom, she will tell you not to put your trust in things tangible. But they are only there to entice you, to take you away from the things that you cannot see, which is the Most High. She and I are lovers. She is not desirous of me, only those who wait at the gates of God. Birth me over. Reveal yourself. But I don't I don't want you to see who I am. Wait at the gate and tell me more. I don't care if you call me simple. I love you, Hokuma. All powerful, all seeing, all penetrating, all spirits. There are intelligence pure, mobile, and she penetrates and permeates everything because she is so pure. For she is the breath and the power of God and a pure animation of the almighty glory. Therefore, nothing defiles can enter into her, for she is a reflection of the everlasting light and a spotless mirror of the activities of God and the likeness and the goodness of her greatness. Though she is one, she can do all things, and while remaining herself, she makes everything new and passes into every holy soul. From generation to generation, she makes them friends with God and prophets, for God loves nothing but the man who loves wisdom. For she is fairer than the sun, and any group of stars compared with light, she is found more superior. For the night succeeds to it, but evil cannot overpower her wisdom. For she reaches in strength from end to the earth to the ends of the world, even throughout the universe, is wisdom. She conducts everything well. I love her and saw after her from my youth up and I undertook to make her my bride and I fell in love with her, her beauty. She glorifies her height in birth and living with God. Father, Lord of all, loves her and she and nights in the knowledge of God in searches of all his works, who is in all the world greater craftsman than she. And if a man loves uprightness, for she teaches self-control and understanding and uprightness and courage, she knows all things and can focus on the future. She understands tricks of language and solving of riddles. Because of her, I have glory among the multitude, knowing that she will give me counsel, so I delight in her, and she gives me understanding. I respect the, the unperishable, the gray-headed, 